So, uh, to specify things, we will also have in the terms or the objects R1, R2, R3, we'll have atomic sentence, which is the smallest unit that could be true or false. It could be best friends. R1, R2, it could be best friend. Oops, friends, R1, R2. It needs to be true or false. So best friend, R1, R2, are these two friends. So anything atomic which can either take a value of true or false. And of course, we will make in complex sentences using all these things. We will make in complex sentences like in the last case, we will take in studies AIR1 and bad marks AIR1 and student R1 and goals AI implies honest AI R1. So that's a complex sentence. Of course, you can do all the Boolean logic algebra over it and actually get to know what the different entities are, whether they are true or false, feed it in, do the forward chaining, resolution, whatever. Now, I said that the problem was me writing down these rules and that was pretty bad. So let me do it in one go for all the row numbers. Let me do it in one go for all the row numbers. I say studies AI, the row number R and bad marks in AI, the row number R and student the row number R and course AI implies honest AI, the row number R. This is valid for all R. For all objects R, this is valid. This is read as for all objects R. So, let's read it in English language. For all R, if studies AI R and bad marks of AI by R and R is a student and AI is a course, this implies that R is honest in the course of AI. That's how it's read in English language. Now, you may see something that you have not seen in any book, which is me underlining things. Now, unfortunately, the standards are that capitals are the ones that actually represent things which are variable. Like here, R is a variable, it could take in any one of the different values that we'll be talking about. And lowercase is usually the constants. Uh, however, unfortunately, my notations are different since my childhood. If I want you to read something, it's in capital. If I don't want you to read it up because it's given Clearly in the book, I just use smalls. So I'll not differentiate between capital and lowercase. Currently I've started underlining, otherwise I'll just tell you this is variable and that's a constant, which will be obvious because it's in for all. So that means it is a variable. Once we get into dropping for alls, still using variables, that's where you will have a problem. I'll have to tell you it's a variable. 
R is a variable, it could be replaced by anything. That means it could be replaced by R1, which was already done. I need not do it. Or it could be replaced by best friend of R1 and bad marks in AI by best friend of R1 and so on or it could be replaced by AI itself studies AI AI and bad marks I like this one AI AI and student AI and goals AI implies honest AI to AI. So let me read it in English language and mind you that's a perfectly correct sentence. There's absolutely no logical problem with this one. If AI studies itself and AI got bad marks in itself and AI is a student and AI is a course that means AI is honest to itself. Now, of course, I know this is false. This is false. It doesn't exist. This is false. That means the source is false. Implication, if your premise is false, the statement is true irrespective of what the consequent is. You need not worry about it. So, what I would probably be doing around over here is that instead of writing down all the rules I will use this for all where for all is what is called as a quantifier so this has a special term which is called as a quantifier there is another quantifier in fact uh, if you look at it I could write down maybe another example so if studies ai comma r implies student r for all r anybody who studies ai is a student only students study Bad example, I studied so much teaching this for the first time. So, if somebody studies AI, that somebody is a student by a technical university definition, not practically. So, we'll go upon the next quantifier and this one is called as a there exists quantifier denoted by there exists. So, for all is valid for every object. Every object, there exists is only valid for one object or more. So, there exists is what is valid for one or more object and therefore the name as well. This is what is also called as an existential qualifier. Quantifier. And the for all is also called as a universal quantifier. Universal for all, existential, there exists one. So, of course, let me take in directly an example. So, there exists a R variable who cheated not honest AI R and this guy studies AI so there's someone who studies AI and he's not honest that's what my phone call told me these are variables uh, these are variables on there exist and believe me you can name anything so if you're more used to variable beings x and y, it's perfectly the same thing. 
Please don't underline in your answer sheets. You have to use any nomenclature. That's okay. I have to underline because I have a problem writing down in lower case. So that's what is the exist existential quantifier which says that there is at least one student who cheated and that's exactly what my example was. Somebody told me on a phone call that somebody cheated. Um, they are of course duals of each other. So just like and and all are duals of each other. Similarly, the for all and there exists a dual of each other. So if you have a not for all P something, so this would of course means there exists a, let me change the variables, same thing. And similarly, not of there exists will become for all. You will not change the variable name, that's absolutely okay. It still holds exactly the same meaning. I just did it so that I could tell you what the difference is. So for all and there exists, under the duality are duals of each other. Um, let's complete the syntax first and then I'll take in a few interesting things. So in... Zeroth order logic, you don't need it, but I said that R1 could be pointing to an object. They could be best friend of R1 that could be pointing to another object and R2 could be pointing out to some object. So you can have equality in your specifications. This can be true or false. It's true if R2 is the best friend of R1. On the other hand, it is of course false for the specific for the case where R2 is not the best friend of R1. So it could also be true or false. Uh, you can also have a negation here that's not equal to. Uh, for all and their exists could be nested like anything else. So I could say for all R, for all C. So why did I do it separately for AI? I could have just said studies, code C comma R and bad marks. C comma R implies not honest, implies honest. What's true for AI is true for all courses. Uh, now, if you want to know what, how to read it, that's how you read it. So, for all R, for all C, if studies C comma R and bad mark C comma R implies on it C comma R. And this thing can also be written in a short form for R, R comma C. So for all combinations of R and C, this thing is what is true. Uh, let's do it a little bit more interesting with the there exists. So... I say there exists an R1 and a R2 such that studies AI R1. So the first one is a student of AI, underline it's a variable, and studies AI, comma R2. So that's a condition that AI course at least has two students. I at least have two students because they are two R1 and R2 that study AI. However, you did not consider that interpretation could be like this. Both of them could be pointing to the same one and of course... So I need to also add 
R1 is not equal to R2. You can either write it like this, or you could just write it down as not equal to. That's absolutely okay. Uh, this is a condition that the course AI has at least two students. One was too simple. There exists R1 such as studies AI comma R1. And now I could also say it. Now let's do more of nesting one quantifier inside the other. I say for all courses C, there exists at least one student. So I write down the condition for there exists at least one student and then put it as true for all courses. Why did I put R1? So inside you have the condition that the course C has at least one student. I say all courses in this university have at least one student, otherwise zero registration, whom are we gonna teach like this? So inside the bracket, I wrote down that the course C has at least one student and then I made a rule for all. So that's nesting between for all and there exists. I could inverse it up as well. Every student studies at least one course. Why will you not study anything in this university? You have to at least take in one course. It's perfectly okay you take in one course. So this is the condition that C studies, the, the roll number R studies the course C. So for every such student R, there exists at least one course C. So every student is at least registered for N, one of this type of a course. And you see that we could mix and match and do all these wonderful little things. Now, of course, my Emphasis is just on specifying quantifiers around over here. Rest everything is what is something that has already been discussed in the zeroth order logic. So I'm not stressing on and or not implication and stuff like that.